Shane here. If you're new to my channel, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Um, but if you've seen my videos before, then welcome back. Just here today at one of the most beautiful locations on earth, um, Milford Sound in Fjordland, New Zealand. Absolutely epic scenes here. We're going to get out on the water um, for the next couple of days, me and the brother Sammy, and try and get us a, a good solid feed. Brother Sammy on boat duties. What's up, Brother Sammy? Come on, mate. So Sammy lives in Dunedin and I live down south in Bluff. Uh, we met up in Lumsden halfway and travelled the rest of the way up to Milford. This is us travelling through the Homer Tunnel. It's about 1.2 kilometres long, right underneath this massive mountain range. Uh, when you pop out on the other side, it's just absolute beauty. never been to Milford Sound before, this is one place that you've really got to tick off your bucket list. Everyone needs to get here at least once in their lifetime. Crack up thing about this trip uh, to Milford was um, I've only met Sammy twice before. Um, he flicks me a message on Facebook, says, Cho bro, came for a mish. I was just like, hell to the air on came from Mish, where are we headed? He's like, Milford Town. I was like, sweet ass. Next minute we're out on this little 3.8 metre boat in the middle of nowhere in some of the deepest water in New Zealand. All these guys in their big flash boats driving past us, looking at us out, you know, out the corner of their eye. Fuck, <laughs> it was crack up. We ended up launching the boat at about 5 p.m. out of Milford. The original plan was for me and Sam to launch from the Milford ramp and head up to Martins Bay, which is just north of Milford. But in the end, we just made a decision to head on down south to a little place called Poison Bay. We just heard that the water and the viz was a lot more calmer and clearer down that way. We were sort of supposed to go straight to Poison Bay and set up camp for the night, but um, once we seen how mecky that water looked, uh, I wasn't gonna say no to a nice evening dive. As soon as I jump in the water, cray straight under the boat. The cray terrain here is unreal. Just big rocks, cracks and boulders everywhere. Now this first cray that I bring up here, you can see is quite small. I mean, it was legal, it was a keeper, but um, it's not really why we came all this way for. Uh, if we want a cray to this size, we would have stayed at home. We came across quite a few small ones at first, so we just ended up leaving them behind. Uh, our mission was to get in there, get some of these big boys under our belt, and take us home a really good feed uh, to our whanau and our kaumatua. And like I said at the start of the video, this place is absolutely beautiful. Um, unreal underwater terrain 
you know, it's definitely going to take full advantage of what it's got to offer. All good, Cal? Yeah. Just a bit close to those rocks, eh? Oh, look, there's a baby pup! Oh, <laughs> You reckon, brother? Hey. Fire. I want to see if I can have a couple more. Loaded. Then he's already here. Sammy's on his way back in with probably another big buck. Mm. Mm. How do you like that? <laughs> Up the gate, a whole nother world. We've got the crayfish here, pretty much littered with big bucks everywhere. Yeah, check that out. We've got crayfish littering the whole deck. Tack's almost full and pretty much haven't even been in there for an hour. So, man, it's really plentiful here. So the first dive mish was successful. Got our limited craze for the first day and picked up a couple of sneaky kinners too. Heading down to Poison Bay was quite beautiful, it was quite scenic. I'd never been there before so I was quite interested to see what it was like. Pulling up at the end of Poison Bay, uh, there's a little river mouth. I was absolutely blown away with how clear the water was here. Um, look at that, you can just see how pristine it is. Oh, it's pretty shallow here.
we were pretty knackered after the dive, so I was definitely keen to get some rest and uh, find a spot to camp up in. Sometimes it's awesome to just do impulse trips like this and hit that reset button and get away from everything that's going on in your life just to think about things a little bit. No social media, no COVID, um, no stress pretty much. All good, Cuzzy? <laughs> Oh, this is mean, eh? <sighs> well, it's morning time now. Uh, as you can see, I picked up a bit of a battle scar in the middle of the night when I went to take a piss but um yeah it's beautiful day out here again absolute scenes check that out the boat is uh, currently parked up on the rocks uh, the tide went out during the night and uh, yeah we've got to wait for it to wait for it to come back in yeah I think we'll go for another dive this afternoon and the bro Sammy wants to get some power so we jump in the tide and get some in there as well yeah we'll get out there go for another dive um, try and get some more craze Take home to the Fano and uh, yeah, divvy, divvy them out. Some to our Komatua, some to our uh, our Fano. Let's go on an adventure. All good, brother Sammy. Sweet, the boat's floating again. Yeah, bro. On the sand. decided this morning that we would go out on a little bit of a fish, uh, chucked out some lines behind us and ended up picking up this kahawa here. Every year there's a big bluefin tuna run out here, so we decided to head out to the depths and try our luck. We ended up heading about 8 k's offshore, um, lucky for us in our small boat the water was quite flat so that was good. Fishing like this you definitely have to have a lot of patience. Um, I knew where I belonged anyway though um, and that was not on top of the water, that was in it so we headed back in shore and jumped in at this spot. This was my first time using a gun uh, bigger than 100 centimetres, um, I could see a big school of kahawai floating below me so I was pretty pretty keen to get into it. I actually had hopes of spearing my first kingfish on this mission uh, but that obviously wasn't meant to be because this is about where things turned south and my ears started to play up on me and I didn't have the ability to equalize after about three or four meters. Super super frustrating to come all this way and have this happen to my ears. I mean if you are a diver you'll know how important equalizing is and how frustrating it can be if you can't equalize properly. It was a tough decision whether I should carry on diving or not uh, but I decided to carry on um, and just not to push the depth too far. 
I looked over and I could see Sammy was getting a bit of action. This guy might as well have a bloody scuba tank attached to his back. An absolute tank of a breath hold. Hey, you more down there? Yeah. Awesome thing about diving with Sam was he's pretty much got a radar for craze, or what I would call a cradar. I reckon diving with better and experienced divers is probably the best way for you to improve yourself. And in this case, I'm really glad I had someone like Sammy with me. I learned so much on this trip, and it's just mean to learn off someone who really knows this stuff. My ears managed to come unblocked for a while and I did have the ability to equalise a little bit but um, yeah, I was definitely feeling a little bit sore. Almost didn't find Yeah, it was a right He's tucked up the side. Yeah. From this point on in the dive I've done a lot of observation on Sam and just took notice of his techniques. Do we head back? Yeah, oh, yeah, even before that way, even a close maybe. Yeah. Oh, fuck me. Oh, that's a big boy. Fuck everywhere, eh? Yeah, dude. Fuck, it's pretty mean. Just straight down there. You know, man's the one right under the thing, and then you can see down this big hole, and there's a big hump in there like this. Where? Just straight down there, I'll tell you. As you can see, this spot uh, had a lot of swell and a lot of surge. It was getting quite rough here. That first way, way that you went on, is that the best way to see them? Nah, cocker, you have to just go there. So do the big cut. Like you see down the hole. So Sam found another little cave uh, that had a few craze in it. Uh, well, I ventured down, but again, my ears were just playing up. So pretty much just got to the entrance of the cave, looked inside it. I uh, could see a few craze in there, but yeah, it wasn't worth venturing inside and ruining my ears in the process. That last dive was enough to make me tap out for this spot, uh, so I left Sammy to it. He grabbed one more and we headed back to the boat. spot my ears are really playing up I dive down to maybe oh, five six meters and yeah just pain straight away and I didn't have the ability to equalize so yeah fuck, it's not safe not safe for the old eardrums um, I must be getting old but um yeah we caught up this next spot anyway mission here is to jump in try and get a few power and uh, yeah hopefully some fish too because um, yeah, we've only got the one car Hawaii um, so far but yeah, the viz looks pretty mean here too. Heading underneath at this spot, I was just absolutely blown away with how clear the water was. After diving back down at home in Bluff, uh, where we pretty much get dirty water most of the time and literally have to hongy rocks, uh, this is like a bloody dream world. I was pretty gutted about my ears, but thought I'd make the most of the situation anyway and do a bit of sightseeing while Sammy went over to the shallows and got us some power. This wasn't a very fishy spot, uh, but I probably could have told you that before we jumped in. Uh, there's no current running at all here, so didn't really expect too much. After tapping out on any deep diving, I uh, thought it might be over for me on the crayfish front, but um, Geez, Milford Sound just came through with the goods. I mean, this is in three meters of water, and I found a cave uh, that had a few craze in it. So I pulled this one here out, and you know, just took some time to admire it. This beautiful, beautiful resource we have, I'm so grateful for it, and I'm just really glad that I've got the ability to dive and provide for my whanau and my friends. 
to me, you can't put a price on this Tonga. This is, this is something really, really special. And I'm also a really cheap guy, and this is free, so check. I'll link back up with Sam and uh, watch them go into this cave. I sat there for a while expecting him to come out the same hole, but um, popped my head up onto the surface and he'd popped out through another uh, opening on the other side of it, which I thought was pretty crazy. You won't find me going into any caves like that. Any down there? It's teasing you, like you want to grab them. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty fucking hammered too, eh? <laughs> Try and get home earlier, you know. Yeah, oh, Fuck, it's been morning anyway, bro. Yeah, it's been awesome. Successful mission. Got the craze anyway. Uh, got our uh, limit for two days of craze. The same we got us the par was two. To me, trips like this uh, is what life's all about. Getting out there into our open country, you know, even if it's just on impulse, getting out there and just doing the things you enjoy and what you really want to do. It's good for your mental health and yeah, there's so many positive benefits to just getting away from all the crap that's going on in your life and having to think through of things. And saying that though, nothing beats coming back home to the whanau Back to our Tūranga Waiwai with a beautiful kai for everyone. Milford Sound, eh? What a place. Definitely gonna have to head back there again. It's been a bit more time. Bit of a sad buzz when I was unpacking the gears when I got home. Found out that I cracked my fin uh, during the trip. So yeah, not good, not good. But yeah, lucky for me, um, the brothers uh, Shay and Nick from Seek Fins came through and hooked me up with a dope as uh, pair of carbon fiber blades. So I really appreciate that brothers and they're definitely gonna get used. So yeah, if any of you guys are interested in getting some of these beautiful uh, fins from Seek, uh, I'll leave a link down in the description below. Just wanted to give a little bit of a shout out to uh, Shay from Strayline. Strayline's a New Zealand company with heaps of mean gears. Uh, this is their poncho that I wear after every dive, keeps me nice and warm and dry. And then we've got my personal favorite, uh, the Kinna Kings T shirt. I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who wants to go and check any of their gears out. Another pretty cool New Zealand company, guys, uh, Māori Moana Adventures. Uh, these fellas make a really good uh, snorkel and mask setup um, with GoPro attachment on it. So, yeah, 
check them out if you can too. Finishing up this video guys, I just wanted to say, get out there, uh, do things you love, do the things you enjoy. We only get one life, so make the most of those opportunities uh, while you still can. Also to you able-bodied divers, hunter-gatherers, make sure you're feeding your whanau and we're getting a feed for our kaumatua and all those other people who can't get it. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, do that now because I've got some pretty good adventures building up in the pipeline. Take care out there guys, dive safe and enjoy the rest of your day.